waking up each day with a clear vision of where your business is headed, not just because you've crafted a meticulous plan, but because that plan aligns deeply with God's purpose for you. You aren't frantically chasing the latest trends, nor are you feeling pressured to perform according to worldly standards. Instead, there's this peaceful assurance, a confidence that every step you take has eternal significance. This kind of clarity isn't about making it big or proving your success. It's about fulfilling the calling God has uniquely designed you to carry out. But how do we find this kind of clarity, especially in a world that's constantly selling us a different version? Many successful entrepreneurs today, people like Sonny Leonard Doozy, Mel Robbins, they tell us that clarity comes through relentless action, fast decision-making, and self-confidence. They emphasize visualizing your dreams and working really hard to make them happen. While these messages are powerful and undeniably motivating, there's a missing piece for those of us who are looking to build God-centered businesses. We aren't just there to follow our own ambitions. We're here to really walk the path that God has laid out for each and every one of us. And that path often involves things like surrender and prayer and patience, qualities that don't seem to fit the world's formula of success. So on this episode of the Truth of Business Show, we're going to dive into what it means to have that God-centered clarity that calls us to a well higher and more purposeful business adventure. We're going to explore how creating a plan rooted in faith really differs from those quick fixes that the world offers. This plan is less about control and more about cooperation with God's leading. So if you're ready to trade that hustle for hope and ambition for alignment with God's will, stay with us as we discuss the beauty, the challenges, and the rewards of finding true clarity for your business direction. This is Deneen TV. And I'm Mary Lor. Welcome to another episode of the Truth and Business Show where truth is God's word and business is how we serve. You know, and we have served for over a decade now, helping hundreds of women really find God's calling for their business through the Calling Clarity course. And we want to help you too. So that's why we've created this free training, how to build an impactful business that serves God and perfectly aligns with his design of you without first waiting for a sign from God, developing a brand, or even creating a website. You'll see it down in the description. So let it inform you of how God wants you to show up in your business, the one that he designed for you. There we go. And before, yeah, <laughs> before we get into today's topic about clarity for your business direction and how it needs a plan, mm -hmm. we want to remind everyone to subscribe to the channel if you're watching us on YouTube and ring the bell so you know that you'll get a notification when we upload. And if you're listening, please make sure you're following us on your favorite podcast platform and give us a five-star rating. We would love that. And please make sure if you share, you can share the episode from wherever you're listening. That oh. really helps us out, helps the, the algorithms out <laughs> and helps spread our podcast. Uh, thank you. That would be great. So let's get into this discussion today. First, by contrasting really what is secular motivation or and biblical or christian what the, what this kind of clarity really looks like what are what are people in the in the marketplace teaching and what how does that contrast with um with what christian with biblical things happen right mm -hmm. so we know i've worked with a lot of of secular of secular coaches right, right. and Really, what I have seen is they focus um, on defining clarity so that you have a strong brand message, you know, clear action steps. They, they, they go, here's the formula. Now go, 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 go to do it. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. I, I myself listen to Mel Robbins. Um, I think she has some you know, good things, but I know I can tell that it's, it's focuses on self and mm -hmm. pushing self and motivating yourself <laughs> after and taking the steps of course that yeah. I recommended 
Oh yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, I've done things with Sonny Leonard Doozy and though brilliant and great, mm -hmm. I got to the point where I couldn't use that anymore. It, it was going right. beyond where I could really do it because exactly. really, I, I think that what you said, it's that self focus self. and yeah. yes, we need to understand ourselves and that's like you know, understanding God's yeah. design of us, but then we need to push it back out. And I think exactly. what they do is more going into what we would call like more new age stuff, like visualization yes. and, and, and oh. seeing where you want to go and kind of making that happen, like I manifesting know. and that manifesting. Just, it's just kind of no. icky kind of it's thing. Icky. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. They, I mean, of course we are proponents of becoming self-aware. You oh, have definitely. to be self-aware about how God designed you. Mm -hmm. But, and once you're there though, like you said, you only, you get to that point, you know, that you, we have to stop and step back and go to God. Yeah, oh, definitely. And try to will ourselves to do something. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's like you can get burnout just doing yeah. more and more and more work. You can get really disillusioned to to like oh, this is never going to work out, and and you want to give up. And that's not what God wants for us, you know. They, I mean, they both have. Oh, well, since we're using these two as examples, they both have really motivating advice. Again, yeah. it, it, but you can only motivate yourself so much. You can only exactly. have so much confidence. You can only see your results and be excited or or defeated until you want to give up. And if you don't yeah. have something outside of yourself, then I think it's very hollow. Very yeah, shallow. That's such a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they advocate for, you know, you take charge of what you're doing. If you're fearful, then, then you can just push past it. And we have all those little sayings, you know, like fear is, what is it? The, the, what is fear? The, oh. the acronym they use for I know. fear. I don't remember it now. You I know, know I don't false, <laughs> false evidence appearing real. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. it's like, Oh, I could talk myself into this. And, but if, we, if everything comes from inside of us, then right. that's very limited. You know yeah. what I mean? I very think it's limited. limited. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it totally leads to burnout because mm -hmm. you're constantly striving and working so hard mm -hmm. and, yeah, it, you're going to burn yourself out. Right. Because you're looking, the world is looking for what their idea of success is, which is the profits, the yeah. accolades, the, the followers, the yep. clients, all, all the, more, number, more, 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 all the numbers, yep, all the external numbers. numbers, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it really yep. doesn't pull us into what our deeper values are. And I think that's the contrast when we go to biblical or Christian understanding of clarity is that foundationally, there is a huge difference between what the world's telling us to do and what God's telling us to do, because we want to be rooted and our clarity rooted in God's plan, not just in whatever we are visualizing or what's outside of us, but what does God put inside of us? I know, right. To, to put out into the world, to really live up to our part in his story. Right. And really, I could see how that just leads you on the hamster wheel of just mm -hmm. going around and around and around when you're trying to keep up with what's going on in the world or making choices that are is what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. That's really a tough. If you think about it, it really can lead it. Like I said, burnout, being yeah. so frustrated and just the pressure you'll, you'll buckle under the pressure of trying to conform to mm -hmm. what the world defines as success. Exactly. I mean, for us, it is not about the vision that we have for our business or the ambition. It's really Am I in God's will? Am I doing what God is asking me to do? Because when we do that, and even going as far as we do and saying, doing it inside of God's design of you, you're not going to get overwhelmed. You're going to actually have that energy to get up every single day and go, I get to do this. But if you haven't figured out that part, if you're trying to follow somebody else's blueprint or have the accolades or the numbers of, of the world you're never going to find that satisfaction in no, doing what God is asking no. you to do. You because know? I don't know about you, Janine, but have you ever been in a situation where it wasn't a good fit for you? Mm. And I mean, you could sit there and try as hard as you want, but 
it's you're going to be unhappy and certainly not satisfied. Exactly. I mean, there are parts of our business that are more difficult or less challenging yeah. or boring or whatever, but the overall result, like what you get to do. And I, I, yeah. you know, it says in the Bible in Proverbs three, five, and six, and probably most people know this to trust in the Lord with all your heart and not to lean on your own understanding and all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That's so important that we remember that is that it's not up to us to go do whatever we feel God's called us to do by the world standards. We have to go do in the way that he wants us to go do. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, and I know there's the other the Psalm uh, 32, eight that says, I will instruct you and teach you in the ways which you should go. And will I advise you with my eye upon you. So he's oh, there. How awesome is that? <laughs> yeah, I know. He's there of, to help us. I know. Instead of me just going, hmm, I like that. I think I'm going to try to get that. <laughs> Exactly. It, and, and again, it's being, spending that time with God, especially with your journal open and just putting everything into your journal, whether it's an idea for your business or praying for your family or whatever, mm -hmm. I have seen over and over again, how God just unfolds ideas to me and gives, gives me confirmation. And, and really we need that dependence on him, his wisdom to ask him for the his wisdom so that we can really say, am I doing this in my own self-reliance that self again? Right. Yeah. Or, or am I doing it in God's wisdom, God's way, not the world's way. And so that's really, um, I think significant in, in the changes in the, in the contrast, the change in thinking the, these two ways, because Probably when we first started in business, we did think in the worldly ways. We were thinking, oh you, know, you know, I need this and this and this and this. I did. I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so again, it, instead of the self asserting, I'm going to go do this. It is the total surrender to God's will and God's timing. Let's not forget that. <laughs> yeah. Because of course, especially when you're in a, business situation and you need to make money or you need to mm -hmm. do whatever you need to do you really you want it tomorrow it's really hard to have patience yeah and I've been that way we've seen our clients be this way where they'll be like well I need to have a business up and running in three months and, exactly. and I need to be making replace my current income it's like that is really not going to happen. It's, right. They're not realistic. And not if, realistic. if God's pulling this on your heart to do this and you're working and figuring out what the best thing for you to do is, yeah. it's going to take time. It's not, it's, it's really understanding God's design of you, acknowledging the limitations and being realistic with your yes. goals and recognizing that God is sovereign over all of it, it, every aspect of our life. So no matter what's happening or you want to have happen, it's got to go within God's will. It can't right. be outside of God's will. And, and, and you and I are even going through this now, making sure that we're staying in God's will. This is not a one and done thing. This is something that we're constantly seeking to make sure right. that are we doing this in our own way are we trying to do something that God doesn't really want? Is he thwarting us or are we doing something so fantastic that the enemy is thwarting us? We have to continually be before the Lord surrendering to him for all these things, because, you know, the process is really a lot less about achieving that quick visible result. And it's really about us walking in obedience. God wants to change us and transform us. And he's doing it through business. And right. so he's going to help us to be the person that we're supposed to be. You know, I, we, we have the word sanctify, we have the word transform and change. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're going to display more and more of the fruits of the spirit as you wait patiently for God in your business and not just wait like, Oh, God's going to do everything, but really seek after what God wants and continue to work the way it's logic, the logical way. Correct. I mean, right. we're not supposed to just sit on our hands. No, right. <laughs> we have to take some action. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, 
again, it's that contrast between that personal ambition and understanding God's unique design of us so that we can faithfully follow him on the path that he wants for us, the direction he wants us to go. And it might not have immediate tangible results, but in the long run, it's going to be the best thing for us. It really is. It really is. You're going to be definitely, like we said before, transformed, sanctified, and growing in your faith. Um, and it really does that. It really helps you do that. If you take your time and have patience and not try to push your way through. But, but anyway, it's in this, well, let's, let's hear from you guys. What do you think? Yeah. What have you been relying on when it comes to seeking clarity for your business? What What's going off in your brain as we contrast these two different, very different approaches to business? We'd love to know in the comments. Give us your feedback. Give us your, your questions. Um, you know, let us know. Is it just us? <laughs> but I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think it's probably I think it's probably more than just us because we we're bringing you these topics because these are things that we wrestle with all the time. These are things that we think through all the time, and we want to always have that God centered business. So we're always going to bring it around back to this. But yeah. we're we're not perfect. We can slip into these things as well. Absolutely. Okay. So now let's, let's switch gears a little bit. And now let's talk about why God-centered clarity really needs a plan. Even like I said, you're trusting God for the results, but you can't just sit on your hands. You have to be doing something. And if everybody has ever talk to me, they know that I'm big person on plans and goals yeah. and action steps and all of those things. And there is a difference though, between having a plan and think taking control. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, taking control again, goes back to that self and self ambition and, and pushing through where in contrast, you know, going to God with your plans, with your open in open hands <laughs> and saying, God, you know, guide me and through this and adjust my plan yeah. where is where you need me to. Yeah. I mean, surrender looks like this, your open hands up to God. Right. Because if we're trying to hold on with a tight fist to everything that we're trying to do and we're not letting go. And letting God, and I know that's like a cliche, but that's really all of our plans have to be held like this very loosely yeah. because, and I just heard something this morning on, on a video that emotionally immature people are flexible and God is maturing us. And if the more we can be flexible and regroup and, and, and really be able to pivot or whatever and not hold on tightly that yeah. shows maturity that shows maturity but That's of course awesome. it's awesome and then of course <laughs> there is a, there is a purpose of a plan right there's a purpose in, in the plan because what it really provides for you is to have a focus i mean you can put your plan here open handed but it gives you a focus of which direction to go it aligns with god's design of you what he wants you to do so that's the first thing a plan's going to do it's going to give you focus because right. for doing all the things all the time i know nothing's going to happen no and you're <laughs> going to need focus for sure because there are any and we all know this. There's so many things coming at us like, oh, you have to do it this way or this way. Here's my plan. Here's this plan. Here's, here's this way to do it. And or why don't you try this or this? Because I know I fell into the trap, too. And I was doing things that I didn't really like doing at all. And it was just drudgery. So yeah. you need you need focus and to stick to that plan. Yeah. Stick to the plan. And that helps to have the plan is also to have accountability because if you mm -hmm. have the plan, you create your benchmarks, you, you create things that keep you on track. And of course you're doing it with the CEO, the chief, everything officer of our business, the boss. And so you want to make sure that you are accountable, not only to yourself, but to him, to those that you're serving, all of those things. And really what God is calling us to do is to be on mission, to make disciples. So even if you don't have 
500 clients or even 50 clients, you're doing what God is calling you to do. And you're being accountable to yourself. And maybe you need to be accountable to someone else. So lots of different personalities need to say it out loud to someone else, write it down. Yeah. If you write it down, you're like 83% more likely to actually do it. That's an accountability to yourself. And so yeah, that's, that's a great thing about a plan, that's right? Focus accountability. The last thing I think is structure. It helps give you a structure and really allows for that adaptability, that open hand flexibility to really seek God's guidance, but you need a framework. You need a structure. You can't just be haphazard because you'll do that thing. You'll chase all the squirrels. You'll yeah, chase the, squirrels. the next trend, the next best thing, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 all of that and stuff. And isn't that's it funny good. that that structure allows you to be flexible. <laughs> Isn't it funny? But it's true. It's mm -hmm. true. And even if you think of structure as these are the hours that I'm working this week, and but you can be flexible within that structure. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's might sound funny, but it's, it's uh, really true what we need to be flexible and adaptable. Oh, definitely true. And again, we have to make that appointment every day with God to really integrate prayer, your Bible study, just, just getting ideas and it just whatever those impressions are, is putting those down into your journal. So those are the specific things that I really want to talk about is prayer, patience, and faith. Okay. So what do you think? Prayer, prayer's doing what? It's really what seeking God, right? Yeah. Seeking God, asking for wisdom from God, asking him to guide you, surrendering. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, rather than just focusing on a quick, clear answer, it's your journaling, mm -hmm. um, journaling in this out. And it goes along with everything else that you're doing. Prayer requests for families, yeah, uh, for your family and friends and all other ideas. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I've always said is to chronological, put your journal in chronological order. And you don't have to write out paragraph and paragraph, find a way that really helps you to see those ideas. Like today in my journal, I do a lot of praying in color. So today in my journal, I didn't even write any words. I wrote like my family. And then I just made a little cloud and I just like, thought about it, lifted them up to God, made little dots around it, you know, some days it's like that. Other days it's making lists of things, you know, maybe it's a pros and cons list. Maybe it's a, what, what should I do if I decided to do this? And, and I just say, okay, God, what should I do? And I just write it down because by mm -hmm. writing it down, it doesn't have to be the end all. It doesn't have to be the last thing that you think about. Again, you're going to see that unfold in your journal if it's really something God wants. And that's what comes to patience. You can't just expect that quick. The first time I think about it in my journal, God's going to give me the answer. <laughs> right. No, no, it definitely, you know, getting clarity for your business or your life definitely requires waiting on God's timing, um, being obedient and waiting, you know, we, we always say that God's timing is, is our timing is not God's timing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's so not the world. The world wants you to do it now. Yeah. Like fast action, fast action. Right. And, and so this waiting, it's actually growing your character because that's what it's doing, but it, it does, it does like have that level, like you said before, trust of what God really wants. And I, I think that a lot of times what people do is the old proverbial thing of putting the cart before the horse. You're like, oh, I'm just going to go do this because right. that's what everybody is telling me to do, but they're not understanding God's design of them. They're not understanding what God wants you to do. And, and we need to take a minute to like slow down and take a breath and say, why is God putting this on my heart? Why am, why am I in business? What, what is God trying to teach me through this situation? Because it's not just I'm in business to make money or God's going to provide money for me because I'm in business. He's actually doing a lot more work on you through the business. Absolutely. And that's the patience. Patience is one of the fruits of the spirit, right? Yes. Yes. Which is what we need to grow. Definitely. <laughs>
Definitely, definitely. And then again, faith. Faith really is trusting God, trusting that God has you on the right path. Even if you feel like sometimes it's a little bit muddled, not as clear clarity as we want, or yeah. you may even feel like the counterculturalness of it, that is that a word counterculturalness yeah. oh, well, that, that, that you know, sense. your opposite, <laughs> know. your opposite of what the culture is saying you should do. And sometimes that can look very different and that can be very scary for someone that, that you're going to do something in a way that no one else has done it, but that's always going to lead to the best outcomes, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So then what are the practical steps that you can take to gain God-centered business clarity? And of course, we've got five steps for you. <laughs> All right, five steps. So the first step is to seek God's vision, God's will for your business. And this, again, goes back to the work that Mary and I do in calling clarity, understanding God's design of you, your values, your strengths, your spiritual gifts, all of those things and how they impact your business direction. You might think you have a vision out there, but is it aligned with God? That's step number one is to really understand God's design of you. Yeah. Okay. And Mary, I'll let you do yeah. step two. Okay. Oh, step number two is to set God aligned goals mm. that mm -hmm. reflect kingdom values, not just profit or status, which mm -hmm. is definitely countercultural. Definitely countercultural. You know, we do, we have a program, well, we have a little, our bonus, one of our bonuses is my 888 strategy. So it's eight goal areas of your life for uh, eight weeks and eight things a day. And it is to help you have that prioritized, I don't want to say balanced, prioritized life. And it really does help you to align those goals with what God wants you to do, whether you're thinking about your health or you're thinking about your family relationships, your business, your, your, your contribution, your faith, even all of these areas, because when we live that seamless life, and I always think of it as like the very silky purple fabric, when we live that seamless life, we show up all the time, exactly the way God wants us to show up. So that's good. A good thing that the step two is really to have those to set God aligned goals. Okay. The third one, and we've been talking about this the whole time, yeah. create an actionable plan, really map out steps remaining flexible with that open hand yeah. for God's redirection because it may happen. So that's why we do things like quarterly reviews. I used, we used to go on a, you know, a quarterly quiet retreat to really reset ourselves. We've done a, a reset retreat and we're going to put that in the description actually. So y'all can get the reset retreat kind of in a box. So if you want to look at your quarter, you, from before and really right. review what has happened and say, okay, what do I want to stop doing? What do I want to start doing? What should I continue doing? And then plan for the next quarter. You're going to want this reset retreat because it really does help you create that actionable plan. And with the help, and of course we know a quarter is 12 weeks with the 888, it's going to help you even pull it down further. So that reset retreat, I'm just going to, you know, say, if you are looking for something where you can really set these actionable goals, that's what you're going to be wanting to look for in the description. Okay. Step number four, Mary. Yep. Build a community of support. We mm. can't emphasize how important enough, how important a community for accountability and encouragement is mm -hmm. we need to be with others who get us, mm -hmm. you know, as believers it's hard to be, I don't know, I'm sure if you're at work or if you've been in networking, say, it's hard to be in all of a sudden thrown into a community of non-believers or a mix. You know, you can really see things that maybe you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to have that community of um, believers like us mm -hmm. to help and encourage each other. Yeah, because we don't always get that at church either, because not everybody has a business, not everybody is even in the workplace. Right. And, 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 um, and we need people that get both sides of us, the business side of us and we the do. believer side of us, B and B, B and B. 
Believer in business. I love that. <laughs> and of course, we've already talked about this. Step five, regularly, regularly review with God. The importance of really regularly bringing that plan back to God to make the adjustments, to make the insights, get those insights, get those ideas from God. Mary and I were going to be honest. We're in this process right now of making adjustments. It's not a one and done deal. This is a very organic thing. Having a business, it's an adventure. It's a journey. It has it ups and downs. So we need that regular review with God, whether that's daily, monthly planning, that quarterly quiet retreat or the reset retreat. All of those things are really important to keep us aligned with God and in the way that he wants us to be right, Mary. Right. Definitely. <laughs> and we know that, you know, God's not going to audibly say, okay, Mary, I want you to do this. <laughs> and of course we wish it was that way, but it, that's where the obedience and the patience comes in and mm -hmm. waiting, waiting. Mm -hmm. And maybe you might be reading something in your Bible study that hits you, or you might be listening to uh, worship music and it hits you like, it's again, just waiting and obedience uh, to God to, to gain his wisdom. Yeah. So let's remember, let's kind of sum this up. The clarity in a God-centered business isn't about having all the answers or moving with perfect precision as you're doing everything. It's really, again, about aligning with his purpose that is much larger than us. The world's approach to clarity is really about, and, and, and having the success is that may seem effective at some level. It's urging us to hustle, to chase those visible achievements and really to define, to really define ourselves by quick wins. But, but, and that's a big, but when we choose God's path, we're invited to rest in the knowledge that he has designed our journey, our adventure very uniquely. And with with an eternal perspective, not just a short-term vision. The clarity that we seek then really becomes about our faithfulness, not our perfection, which glory, hallelujah for that. And trusting that really God's going to reveal each step in his timing. So we've seen today that while voices like people like Sonny Leonard Doozy or Mel Robbins really provide valuable insights, we're not negating that. Their methods often place a the burden of success squarely on our shoulders, which really can lead us to feeling what overwhelmed, misaligned mm -hmm. and spiritually drained. Absolutely. So by, by contrast, the biblical approach to clarity really shifts that weight and God calls us to surrender to his plan. So he gets to take the weight, right? We seek his guidance through prayer. We live with the patience that comes from trusting him fully. It's a path that Okay, it may be slower, less defined by those immediate wins, but it's filled with what it's filled with peace. It's filled with purpose. And it's really filled with a deeper, deeper sense of satisfaction and fulfillment because it's rooted in obedience to his calling. So as you out there listening, watching, as you move forward in, in your God-centered business, remember that true clarity comes from looking up, not just in. Take time to really create a plan in partnership with God and really be open to the direction that he leads. Yes, definitely. And I'd like to point out this, this verse today in the version app, and I think it really is hits home today. So I, I looked it up. Um, it's Ephesians 3, 20, 21. To him who is able to do far more than we ask, think or imagine to him be all the glory, honor, and praise. And if you just think about that, like we're very limited in ourselves and we need him uh, to do more than we can even imagine. So that's my ending thought. But if you truly want your business to be a God-centered business, we'd like to invite you to our free training, how to build an impactful business that serves God and perfectly aligns with his design of you without first waiting for a sign from God, developing a brand or creating a website. We'd like you to get the clarity that you need to know that how God designed you and how he will put you on the right path, going in the right direction and keeping you in his will. You'll find the link in the description below. 
You know, your business isn't just a means to an end. It's an expression of God's work in and through you. So when challenges come and they surely will come, you can hold fast to the promise that God has gone before you and will continue to guide your path. Let his clarity be your compass and know that as you build with God, you're really investing in something eternal, something that can truly impact lives for his kingdom. This is Deneen TV. And I'm Muriel Orr. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, be filled to overflowing. Mm-hmm.